When most people think of fitness icons, they usually visualize a famous athlete or Hollywood actor. Often those who have undergone insane transformations, with millions of adoring fans desperate for their secrets. The trouble is, the information given frequently has us all thinking the same thing. There's something sketchy about what he said here. But it's not just the dubious advice given, it's the way it's often presented. So eat like this, to look like this, of course, men's health. Why does celebrity fitness often seem to defy the laws of science and contradict common sense? Who programmed his training to the fact where he felt disassociated, close to vomiting and chasing the pain? This advice is not something anyone should exclusively follow. And the reason for this all stems from a serious communication problem. I love the insight into some of the celebrity stuff going on behind the scenes, but when it's just like a random dietitian saying, eat like this to get jacked like Thor, you know? People want transparency. They want to know what you're actually doing. Whether it's healthy, not healthy, they just want to know. They want to know the truth. It was all a ruse. It's all a lie. It's all a magic trick. It's, it's Hollywood. That's what Hollywood is. That's what movies are. It's show business. What's your diet like? Do you ever have a cheat day? Did you start to psychologically lose it? Did you do three hours a day? So why shouldn't you follow celebrity fitness advice? And what often makes celebrities awful fitness role models? The first exposure most get to those seen as fitness icons is usually through movies and the media. If you were to combine the top 10 most influential fitness influencers, their reach still wouldn't come close to that of someone like The Rock or Chris Hemsworth. And because these people were so influential, they're put on a pedestal in front of millions of people, train like The Rock, build muscle like Chris Hemsworth, or eat like Tarzan. But if you spend just 20 minutes listening to some of the advice being amplified, it's very clearly flawed. 12 o'clock midnight, I am going to finish off that other half of chicken. My morning starts at 3 a.m. every morning. I get up, I meditate, and then I roll over and I do my 2,222 push-ups. All this does is make beginners assume that the more difficult the protocol, the better the results you get, which couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, this advice is the opposite of men's health. Unfortunately, exaggeration is extremely common. You have to eat 6,000 yeah. calories a day. Yes. I read that in the Hollywood yes. Reporter. I, I literally rang Dwayne Johnson. 6,000 calories in the containers and just six, eat it to me all day. Did you say 6,000 calories? Up to 6,000 calories a day. A day? It's very unlikely that they're eating more than Mr. Olympia. And when it comes to the actual diet, most say the same thing. Boiled chicken breast every two hours, which is not very good. But that's how you get that body. Brown rice, grilled chicken, broccoli, a gallon and a half of water a day, mm -hmm. and working out two to three times a day, six days a week. There's, you know, an abundance of science that's very, very widespread at this point that outlines how terrible that micronutrient deficient diet model is of chicken and rice and broccoli, as well as the overtraining. Clean eating to this extent of the same meal is likely to either lead to the person ditching the diet or developing an eating disorder. And it's being broadcasted as good advice. And these aren't just carefully selected examples either. It's seen very often. Chicken, fish, steak, always protein six times a day. Protein, steamed vegetables, and occasionally some brown rice or something like that. In fact, there's many instances where the protocols don't add up, such as the actor's claim for his Tarzan roll preparation. At nine months of um, chicken breast and broccoli. Yet his trainer says something completely different. So this diet was based around a lot of seafood. So unless you consider a chicken an aquatic being, celebrity fitness advice probably shouldn't be taken seriously. Exaggeration is extremely common and unfortunately, the media continues to glorify blatantly awful information. But it's not exactly like their actual methods are good to copy either. What I still struggle to understand is why the media encourages us train like a celebrity when their situation is completely different. Often, these people are training for very specific reasons or a movie role in which they undergo drastic body transformations through crash diets. Yet, it's always marketed as health or something that should be encouraged. Even though these people often struggle immensely to push through such unsustainable routines. And that's with the motivation of massive paychecks and tons of support. Still, they often fall off immediately after filming. We wrapped the movie and I, 
fell off the wagon completely. Once the shoot is over, do you slack off? Crash, and just terrible. The worst, the worst. And every time I say I'm not going to do it. Health is being confused with aesthetics, which are not the same thing. Even when celebrities themselves try and raise awareness of this, it always seems to get ignored. For guys, that's unrealistic. I'm telling you, like I got. What rarely gets mentioned is sustainability and the importance of adherence. Actually being able to stick to a fitness protocol long term, as opposed to jumping on the latest celebrity crash diet. If you're going to impart on a crash diet, understand that the term crash is going to lead to damage unless you educate yourself and come out of the process. What makes a good trainer isn't someone who can create the most insane routine, but the best protocol which their client can stick to to achieve their specific goals. Whatever diet that you're going to do that's going to be successful is going to have to be sustainable. You're going to have to put yourself in a position where, you know what, I can do this every single day. Most people within the general media's demographic are new to fitness and likely have a problem with adherence or actually sticking to a diet. So why celebrity routines, which often require doctors, trainers, chefs, dietitians, and money as motivation, presented as something to copy? It's just a completely different situation. Uh, they paid me a lot of money to do this. If you can find a studio who's willing to pay you what they pay me to make Sunny, um, you will have a lot more dedication than you think. While it is possible to look as good, if not better, than many in shape celebrities, Copying the same crash protocol they may have used is almost always going to end badly. The more intense and stricter the protocol, the less likely the person is to stick to it. And when celebrity crash diets are the introduction to fitness for many, it's no surprise why most see health and fitness as something horrible and unnecessarily difficult. But even if the advice was all accurate and sustainable, it still makes no sense why it should be presented as something to copy considering we're never shown the full picture. If you were to guess what this is a picture of, based off what you're shown here, you might guess a giraffe, maybe a leopard, or even a jaguar, but you'd be completely wrong. It's actually Greg Doucette dressed as a pimp. This is what's going on with these small chunks of celebrity fitness advice. You cannot see the full picture. It's wildly unlikely that you're gonna build muscle like Chris Hemsworth, doing Joe Wick style training. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. He might have done that particular workout, and it's great for many reasons, but it's not responsible for turning into four, which is likely the result of heavy lifting, proper programming, and other things outside of the video we're never gonna get to see. Like, no dude, you did not hold a 15 pound dumbbell and do goddamn goblet squats outside in your tennis court to gain 22 pounds of muscle. And yet, this is what Chris Hemsworth's workout routine is. Even still, it's impossible to look exactly like someone else because everyone's genetics are different. Yet, the marketing seems to be based around looking like these celebrities. One of the most common reasons that people give up on their fitness expectations after a month or two is that they have completely unrealistic expectations. The media frequently presents small pieces of random advice as if it's a secret to looking like The Rock or Frank Grillo. In fact, in promotion of Chris Hemsworth's app, his stunt double supposedly gained 10 kilograms of muscle in eight weeks while eating 4,000 calories, a body fat of 5%. How is this even allowed? How are they allowed to put out bullshit advertisements like this? False claims. Marketing is meant to help consumers, not mislead them. A large part of the problem is the way the info is presented. Celebrities are always gonna crash diet and get things wrong in off the cuff comments. And that's somewhat understandable. But it's the media who glorifies or misrepresents the advice when they could quite easily add a disclaimer or make it useful to the public instead of being completely misleading. Which I would have thought was particularly important to a company called something like Men's Health. And I think it's quite evident by now that everyone just wants to see some attempt of improvement. But what if this is being too critical? After all, amongst the sketchy advice is some very good information with solid concepts being taught. People want to know what the secret is. The secret is you can't do it in a month. Thank you, I it, like that It though. takes eight months and or a year or a lifetime to, of consistency and eating properly and, f and truly feeding yourself, not starving yourself, but giving yourself proper nutrition. The trainers are very knowledgeable and you can't cast an umbrella over all celebrities. Not to mention, while it is encouraged, 
Nobody's forcing you to follow their advice. And if deceptive marketing gets someone into fitness, that could be a good thing. Men's Health claimed to have over 21 million viewers, and they're a positive influence to millions, a source of inspiration and insight, which we wouldn't get. Under my VShred video, comedian Bill Burr read an interesting comment. I swear fitness community is becoming more and more like the beauty community drama. That's all fascinating. While I do think it's somewhat true, especially when criticizing petty things and honest mistakes, the bigger problems do need attention before they become even more common practice. I thought it'd be relevant to tell you that the guy has been a known fraud in the fitness industry. Really? I mean, he's, he's shredded though. I mean, he's doing something right, isn't he? And this is where all these problems stem from. Someone can look great, but still give bad health advice, be unhealthy, or take advantage of people. And the poor communication of celebrity fitness advice hasn't really improved, despite the many fair points raised in the comment sections and reaction videos. So while there's many positives, the poor communication of celebrity fitness advice needs awareness and attention because it's likely causing more damage than most other things in the industry. Honestly, at the moment, only look to celebrities for inspiration and not fitness advice. The way it's communicated through the media in general isn't great. A better alternative would be to have like a fitness portfolio consisting of multiple channels where you don't hero worship a particular person. It'll allow you to learn much quicker, spot the bad advice and achieve your fitness goals. Now this will look different for everyone, but an example fitness portfolio I'd have given myself would look something like this. I was actually lucky enough to have the opportunity to ask some of the people from my portfolio what to look for. What exactly makes a good fitness role model? Well, first is honesty and transparency about what it really takes to achieve great results and how long it's going to take. Second is someone who's scientific and willing to change their mind when new data comes in. And third is someone who's living this lifestyle over several years rather than someone who's focusing on short-term transformations, quick fixes and gimmicks, but has never had any long-term success. I'd say one key thing to look for is people who understand that just because something worked really well for them doesn't automatically mean that that's what's going to be best for everybody. You know, there are certain foundational training and nutrition principles that do apply across the board, but there's still a ton of individual variation at play, not just physically, but also in terms of mindset, lifestyle goals. So if someone tends to speak in absolutes without considering those sorts of differences, then you're probably not getting the best advice. I really think it comes down to a lot of due diligence on the person watching the videos to begin with. Because let's face it, there's a bunch of baloney out there. There is so much nonsense that you can't get away from. So you need to watch as many videos as you can and you need to kind of distrust this person to begin with. You know, you don't meet somebody in the street and go, oh my gosh, I trust you more than anyone and give them a big hug. No, you kind of, you don't judge them, but you get to know them. And I think you have to do that with YouTubers and whoever else is giving you this kind of advice. And also just be smart. If something sounds too good to be true, it's too good to be true. Like it just is. Most people in the industry want the same thing, to help. The point is, you shouldn't want to undergo a celebrity-esque body transformation. It can be much more enjoyable and sustainable. I made this video to hopefully stop people blindly following celebrity fitness advice. If you can like and subscribe, it'd be greatly appreciated, as it'll allow the video to reach more people, and maybe even someone at Men's Health. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one. But also, really, what makes a good fitness influencer is random soft toys that actually don't make any sense at all.